Brothers, sisters, fingerlings. It is a sweet balm to my rugose soul to see you here before you to be again this morning, for I must confess my heart has been assailed by doubt. For in these troubled times, the best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. And most of those who go around reposting that quote think it was coined by Sheldon on Big Bang Theory. <laughs> this raging plague of willful ignorance has impacted me as much as anyone else. So badly has it gotten that I've had to shave off my beard to stop people mistaking me for Vermin Supreme and throwing galoshes at me in the street. <laughs> I don't have your pony. <laughs> But I have looked into my heart and listened to what the worms that live there have told me, and I urge you to stop taking antibiotics and accept their message. <laughs> what if we're wrong? I realize it's the last message people think they need to hear at a prayer breakfast intended to rekindle our faith, but I've watched a lot of evangelical programming while composing this sermon this morning and resolved to do the opposite of what they were doing, and I believe the question must be asked. What if we're wrong? <laughs> Faith can indeed move mountains, but its track record with regard to removing stubborn facts is a lot more spotty. <laughs> Rather than enabling followers to live contentedly in the world their God created, it leads many to covering up irksome lady bits on furniture, Facebook, and also ladies. <laughs> Disregarding troublesome science and burning troublesome scientists at the stake, and willfully ignoring inevitable signs that you're wrong, or even that you're right. The most satisfying proof that an anthropomorphic deity created humanity in its image is the preponderance of cranky incels with incoherent manifestos. <laughs> but you don't see a whole lot of school shooters nominated for sainthood. When faith itself becomes an absolute, it's not just blinding, it's toxic. Faith in defiance of facts is eating your nose to spite your face. Your delicious, delicious nose. <laughs> I'm not trying to destroy our faith, but no religion worth our devotion can, can help be reinforced by a stiff dose of doubt. Though the signs that our much maligned beliefs are a true interpretation of the mysterious workings of the universe pile higher every day, we must never stop interrogating our faith, lest it become as blind as any other religion and start remaking the physical universe in accordance with our own unexamined assumptions about it. I worry that our blind faith will bring about a false apocalypse, that we'll visualize ourselves into oblivion the way Marianne Williamson visualizes away our national debt. <laughs> I worry that the mass of plastic twice the size of Texas isn't Erzatz, really, eh, that will eclipse the true one. <laughs> that the unseen planet beyond Pluto is our next president. That our fanaticism will give birth to new gods who make the old ones look like the Care Bears. <laughs> Just as surely as you know that when a white person north of the Mason-Dixon line addresses you as you all, as y'all, they're about to make a sweeping generalization. Or when said person says they're channeling their inner spirit animal as if they contain an Indian burial ground and not half a jar of Miracle Whip and a take-home box of stale Olive Garden breadsticks. <laughs> Y'all need some skepticism. <laughs> Say it with me. What if we're wrong? What if we're wrong? What if we're wrong? Not just about our cult, but about everything. What if the pyramid is simply the most logical way to construct a dwelling, but ancient aliens sabotage the evolution of Europeans by imposing on them a compulsion to erect and dwell in ugly rectangular boxes and force everyone else to do likewise? What if the increased profile of Halloween is actually a plot to drain it of its vitality? What could be less genuinely scary than, it's scary than an annual day when everyone goes to the same store to buy the same costume and knock on the same doors to beg for the same crap? If Halloween is supposed to be scary, it should fall on a randomly selected secret day of every year. <laughs> With costumes assigned by a government-approved Harris vaccine delivered by courier to your home or office, and a failure to secure a pillowcase full of candy as an offering causes the costume to become your permanent likeness. <laughs> now that's a holiday with some chest hair on it. Always were the evil mirror universe we've been fearing all along. What if the cliche of God's demanding only virgin sacrifices is a big misinterpretation, and the distinction is closer to that of olive oil, where the virginity comes from the process of squeezing the juice out of it? <laughs> and what if we're not actually devolving into a superior amphibian race to dwell forever beneath the waves, but just going bald? <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't often see deep ones with as much ear hair as I'm seeing out of this room. 
A wise bumper sticker prophet once said, if you're living like there's no Jesus, you better be right. And yet, in the face of overwhelming proof that all Gospels are a bubble and squeak hodgepodge of outmoded social controls and wildly exaggerated accounts of the career of a Galilean wedding music magician, <laughs> many people of faith strive to be better, kinder humans because of the imaginary angels on their shoulders. And while our faith has exacted much harsher sacrifices, even if we're wrong, it has graced us with a respect for all life, not just the kind that can recognize itself in a mirror and keep a decent credit rating. And understanding that the world is not a pie-eating contest, not a sentence for the bloody period, but an endless tone poem of catastrophe, transformation, and renewal, the trials and tribulations of a living thing struggling towards sentience with every discovery, every revelation, every fumbling attempt at true gnosis. Even if we're wrong, we will have lived more deliciously than those who must undergo increasingly humiliating contortions to always feel that they're right. If faith can move mountains, Skepticism can allow one to see them for the molehills they truly are, and let one start building not mountains but towers that would give Nimrod battle at me. Until then, let us dare to believe in a world where incels are eaten by their own fedoras. Yes! <laughs>